are not satisfied with the way that this country is being run. They see the election as a kind of fraudulent exercise. It's been a strange few months. I've been covering the fringes of the campaign, from joke parties to house parties, demos to rugger bugger piss ups. I'm reporting to you from the top of a cube of very posh men. Now, as the party battle buses finally begin to pull up, looking back, it seems that this has been an election defined predominantly by its water cooler blather. A prime minister refusing to take part in TV debates, the enduring 70s sitcom known as UKIP, the rabble-rousing 90s MTV presenter known as Russell Brand. It's been such a contest of non-personalities, such a clash of no ideas, that whatever happens tonight, it's very unlikely that any single party is going to command an outright majority. We're pretty much nailed on for another hung parliament. But that's hardly surprising. Over the past five years of the coalition, we've seen all of that discontent drain into the seeds of a genuinely multi-party system. At least politically, Britain has never been more fragmented. People have been rejecting mainstream politics as a solution to their problems. How else would you define students smashing up Tory HQ after their tuition fees were trebled overnight? How else would you define five days of the worst rioting and looting this country has ever seen? And that's before you mention Occupy, fracking, phone hacking, zero hours contracts, a corporo-fascist Olympic legacy, and the ongoing war between development sharks and local people for the right to live in London. Underpinning all of the social divisions, the coalition spats, and endless Twitter panics, there has been another battle, the one for Britain's identity. We're being offered the choice of a Labour Britain, a Lib Dem one, Tory, UKIP, Greens, Plaid, SNP, or some combination of those, but it's hard to escape the sense that politics in this country has outgrown the present party system. A system built on archaic, now evaporating loyalties, a system too inflexible to deal with the issues politicising the everyday lives of its people. Instead of Parliament, the internet and the streets are becoming the arenas where British politics plays out for most people, which suits us fine. 